What's going on, everybody? This is Al from PlaybookGamer.com, and today I want to talk about the Steve Sarkeesian offense with the Texas Longhorns. I want to cover some of his favorite concepts from various categories. We're going to cover a run play, an RPO, play action. We're going to do a drop back pass, and we're also going to show a screen. And I'm actually going to provide some game film as well. Make sure you look at the top right of the screen or in the description below the video. I'm going to have links to very similar plays to what they actually use. And we're going to see if we can actually use some of this in NCAA Football 06. And I can go ahead and tell you that we can. Now, the first thing I want to talk about is the roster really quick. Let's go over to practice strategy. And when it comes to their roster, Quinn Ewers, everybody knows who this kid is. Really good passer of the football he doesn't run a whole lot so a lot of their run game is basic handoffs jet sweeps things of that nature they got a good little group of half backs we're going to feature when it comes to their wide receivers a good little group as well and they got a really good tight end of jatavion sanders so let's talk about the first concept and that is basic half back dive now like i mentioned texas likes to use a lot of motion either with jet sweeps which aren't in 06 unfortunately but you can also use them to your advantage in the run game. So I'm going to go with shotgun spread. And let's go halfback dive, and I think I'll flip it this time. And let's go up against a zone defense. We'll go up against a zone dime look. What you can do is use that similar motion. Like, I can take a slot receiver and motion him around. And as you notice, nobody followed the receiver, meaning they're playing zone. But what you could do is snap the ball right when he crosses the offensive line. And maybe he can block for you. Something like this. Just a really good play. Just an extra blocker. Now you got six guys in the box that can block for you. You snap the ball. We'll see who he picks up. He picked up that blitzer. And you're going up the B gap. And then you're off and running. Now, again, this is zone. When they are playing zone, you may want to keep it more vertical like this. Just in terms of kind of staying up the field and whatnot. But if they're going man, what you can do is we can call halfback dive. And we'll go cover two man whenever you see something like this when that defender is going to follow him and ain't going to show up there but we can hand the ball off and go the opposite direction help ourselves out a little bit I can, I can bring this guy over simplify the numbers on that side do something like this and come over and you got a really nice game to work with so that just goes to show you how motion can really help your run game the next concept I want to talk about is an RPO. Now, when it comes to RPOs with Steve Sarkeesian, he likes to keep his pretty simple, and maybe in time I can update some of these RPOs to be the same, but we're going to use this play right here, Gun P.A. Reed, and um, what he likes to do is literally have one passing option. Here, I got five. There's nothing wrong with that, but he keeps it really simple with his quarterback, and the fact that if this guy is not open, he's just going to hand the ball off. So we can pretend right here that this little whip route or the zig out is our lone passing read. And if we want to go to him, we can. If not, we'll just hand the ball off. So I'm going to go P.E. Reed. We're going to go up against a random nickel play, and we're going to bring it over on the right hash. So what you can do is, in this example, we're going with random defense, and they're going man. This is a good man beater. This is a good zone beater. Maybe I don't like the shading of this front six over here. Maybe I just want to throw the ball. So what I can do is just fake it right here and just go to that whip route and pick up decent yards right there. They're going zone. Maybe I don't like this look again. I can go back to that pit, that pivot route. Something like this. Pick up a really nice gain for some serious yardage. They're going zone again. Maybe I like this look. I like we got the little extra numbers over here. I can hand the ball off. And we can pick up a decent gain right there. You just have to read the box, read the defenders, and see where's the best location to go. Is it in my best interest to run to the left? Or should I just throw it over here? In this case, we got a lot of field to work with. Maybe our line and our tight end can get blocks right here. And if they can, I can just hand the ball off and hope for the best. That play just didn't work out. But you get my point. Now, that's a hard shade to the left by the line. Maybe I just want to throw it if I can get the playoff, something like this and get a quick first down. Let's see, uh, we may run the ball. How about that? Yep, I like that look, and we're going to get a humongous gain. We may end up getting six points out of this, and I think we are going to. Just a great play, but again, just because I have an RPO or a PE read that's got five different passing rounds doesn't mean you have to look at all of them. You could just focus on one that can attack both man and zone, and if you like that look, you like that matchup, go to him. 
If you like the matchup in the box, just hand the ball off to your halfback. The next concept I want to talk about is a true play-action concept called PA Wide Receiver In, and that's coming from Gun Wing Tight End, and this is the play right here. This is an updated play of my own. Uh, this is a new formation to 06. For those of you who are unfamiliar with this, I got links below if you need to look for how to do the playbook editor, or how to get into emulation on the computer, but I want to talk about this play right here, especially what this tight end can do for you. Now, notice what this formation looks like. We got an offset tight end. This is good for split zone running where he can come over and pull while your halfback goes up the middle. But you can also do play action off of that. Now, with this particular play, I can run off of either hash. Let's start off with the right hash. I'm going to go up against a random nickel right here. We'll stay on this right hash. Now, when it comes to zone, you only got one option in this spot and that's going to be your backside post. So we can go ahead and snap this. Looks like we're going zone. I can hit this post right there. Not a very good throw by Quinn, but that's okay. What I wanted to really show you is the left hash, but let's see if we could try it one more time. Maybe I can make a better throw here. That's a little bit better, but even better play by that safety, Hampton. It's better against man. This is what we're showing here. Now, this free safety is going to come and, I guess, double-team the post. You can go to the wheel if it's cover zero, or you can hit the dig, or you can even hit the tight end. Because those safeties, looks like they're going one high, I'll just go to my dig, and that just wasn't a very good throw right there. So let's go up against a man play. I'm going to go back to my P wide receiver end. Let's go against cover two man, just to prove my point. They're going man, cover two. We can hit this dig right here. Good little throw. You can also go to your tight end really quickly. Something like this. And he's got some decent room to work with. A lot of the reason why is because his defender, this number 11, got stuck on the play action. That's why play action is so useful. That's why everybody uses it. Do something like that, and he's got a nice little three to four yard gain ahead of him. And if they go cover zero, you can go to either that wheel route or that post. But I want to mention the left hash version. The left hash version, you got a couple of zone options. You can hit this post against cover two, but I really want to highlight this tight end because this tight end is the focal point of this play. So I'm going to go back. We're going to select PA wide receiver in. Let's go up against like a cover three zone, for example. Here is your zone beater, and he will be open pretty much every time. You can just bounce it to him if you can make a decent throw. We'll try that again. We'll go right here, and I can just hit the button, and he's just got to make the catch. That's just up to him. We can try it a few more times. Go right here, and I'm just doing a normal press of the button, and you can pick up a few yards right there. And But again, all these other routes are really good against man. If they're going man, I can come over here and just pick up whatever yards I need. Just a nifty little play, but the game film that I'm going to link to this one is really nasty. They like to use that switch concept on above your tight end. But a lot of times they use this as like a boot action just to dump, dump it to the tight end real easily and quickly so he can go and make a play for you. The next concept I want to talk about is a drop back pass concept. And it's pretty much a Y juke or Y shock. I think that's pretty much what they like to call it. And that's pretty much when you got an inside receiver run a little stick route or like a little in route. It's just a good little isolation concept when you can put whatever you want on either side. In this case, we're going to go gun five wide smash. So you got two smash concepts on either side. But I really want to focus on this in route. So we're going to go smash and we'll go cover two man. This is just a good little man beater. Now you can use sub packages and formation subs to get your best receiver right there. Maybe a really good tight end. So what we can do here, we can put in that tight end in that spot via tight end slot sub package. We'll select that. I'm going to go man, dime, cover two, man. And you can just do basic isolation with him. It's very hard to stop. There's very few linebackers or safeties that can stop this. Unless you get something like that. That was actually a pretty good throw. Either way, just a good little man beater, but it also can work in, against certain zones as well. So let's try that. Let's go call this play again, smash, and I'm going to go up against cover four zone which is quarters because a lot of times certain zone defense you'll have the middle wide open something like this look how wide open he is so that's like your first read against zone so if you see a big hole above your center just go right there go to him if there isn't a zone uh, a hole right there you can always just bounce it to the flat and pick up whatever yards you can
The last concept I want to talk about is a halfback screen. Now, I'm surprised that I found a team that can actually run this in real life. But this is a play that I created. It's just a simpler screenplay where I got a zone beater on one side with my halfback, just a little swing route with some blockers ahead of him, and a couple man beaters on the other side. So I'm going to go ahead and select that. We'll do a random dime. And they're going man. So go to your man side and just read the safeties. I don't see anybody over the top. So I can go to my go route and make a big play right there. Looks like I think they're going zone. So what I can do is just go to my halfback and pick up whatever yards I can. Go in zone again. You can quickly bounce this to the halfback. You can get decent yardage that way. And they're going cover zero here, it appears. So I can try to go over the top again. Can he make the catch? Yes, he can. And you can also go to your other man beater over here and pick up some decent yards if you can do that as well. All right, hopefully this was helpful. Just a nice little quick guide to what Steve Sarkeesian likes to do. And we'll see if any of these plays or concepts are used in the playoff game against Washington. All right, guys, I'll talk to you later.